Ron Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. We have a very, very reusable video today because we have Quinn Vitam, President and CEO of Reuse Hawaii. These are the people who, instead of knocking down an old building or an old home, go in and deconstruct that structure and reuse everything they possibly can. We'll get into the uh, details shortly. So welcome, Quinn. Thank, thanks for uh, being my guest today. Thanks, Howard. Uh, yeah, great mm, to be here. I yeah. appreciate it. And since I'm an energy guy, let me look at reuse first through energy eyes. If you go up to the mountains of the Northwest to harvest timber, you have to have these great big trucks going up, mm -hmm. saw, 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 cut all the branches off, load the logs onto a truck, take the trucks down to a mill, get rid of the waste, and then mill the lumber to different specifications. Then it needs to go from the mill to a ship, on the ship to Hawaii, from the pier to the warehouse, then to the construction site, and then it needs to be built. Yeah. All of that is one heck of a lot of energy. It's called the embodied energy. It's everything that went into there. And you, we're not counting all of Mother Earth's energy that went to making the, sure. the tree in the first place. And then when the building gets old, its uses expired, boom, it gets bulldozed. And guess what? A lot of the lumber has been treated treated lumber cannot be burned at H power. Right. It goes into the landfill. Do we have a need for more fill in our land? No. It's a subject of eternal controversy. What are we going to do with all this stuff? Mm -hmm. So the old building material is adding to this stuff. So that's yet another problem. Whereas with yourself, you and your crew go in and you deconstruct so why, why don't we go to the first slide, and that, that'll lead uh, your, your conversation there. So you are President and CEO of Reuse Hawaii. Yeah, Executive Director, yeah. Oh, and oh, yeah, yeah, we work to keep building materials out of the landfill. Um, it makes up about 30% of Hawaii's waste construction and demolition really? debris. Hmm. So um, yeah, we work to disassemble buildings as an alternative to uh, conventional demolition. Mm -hmm. And we redistribute all the material through our warehouse in Kakaako. And I, I see where this gentleman has a, is tied down. That's mm -hmm. a, a safety feature. Anybody right. who goes up on a building yeah, needs to have this feet. tie. Yeah. So if he falls over, he's not going to be comfortable, but at least he's not going to fall to the ground. Correct. So, yeah. so and our next slide will be... Ooh. Yeah, so conventional demolition uses excavators, hydraulic excavators, to basically smash down a building and, and um, you know, to get it into small pieces so that it can be packed into dumpsters or dump trucks and then it's hauled to the landfill in Nanakuli. Um, so it's a, you know, quick process but extremely wasteful in terms of all the material that's left in the building just gets destroyed. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, you know, if the demolition practice is, is rethought by doing deconstruction, then uh, we can save material up to 70% of uh, the overall house uh, can be usually saved for reuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's an impressive number. So why don't we move to the next slide and just see what in the world else you're doing here. Yeah, could have been. Yeah, so this is up Wilhelmina Rise and uh, typical single wall house that gets taken down because someone wants to build a bigger one or one that fits their needs better. Um, so, so we we do you know probably a, at least two or three of these a month, um, and they're great because they're pretty lightly built, all single wall redwood uh, material that you know you can't find unless you salvage it from an existing house. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, 
great stuff and, and, and also the homeowner gets a tax deduction for the value of the salvage material. So mm -hmm. on a, on a you know, 1,500 square foot house, there can be tens of thousands of dollars in tax benefit for, mm -hmm. the, for the homeowner. That sounds pretty good. And, and you mentioned uh, redwood and cedar. I have, my house was built in 1956 and I'm mm -hmm. in the back of Manoa. Yeah. And bless redwood and cedar, how old is that? That's 50 something years old. I have done almost nothing to really, really preserve it. Occasional termite uh, treatment mm -hmm. for uh, non, non redwood wood. Right. And that, those, that lumber is still in virtually perfect shape. Yeah. And yeah. I'm getting, I'm in an area that gets 120 inches of rain a year. Mm -hmm. This is remarkable, remarkable wood. Right. And it seems, it's kind of like uh, teak. We value in Hawaii teak, yeah. or not teak, yeah, teak, so much. And if we destroy it, that's almost a criminal waste. Sure, yeah. right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not only do we want to prevent waste, but there's also lots of community resource within the, the houses that get demolished. So mm -hmm. that's what we're working towards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go to the next slide here. Yeah, all so that. So as uh, you talked about, embodied mm -hmm. energy. Yeah, all the all the energy that was put in to create the material in the first place it gets preserved. You know, th this brings to mind the fact that, <clears throat> especially in Indonesia and certainly also in Brazil, the hardwoods, the uh, tropical hardwoods are just being cut, cut, deforested, deforested, mm -hmm. and to the extent that we can reuse existing high-grade wood, that preserves those uh, ancient uh, rainforests there, mm -hmm. yeah. which is one of the major causes of uh, global warming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next slide is um, talking about you know more benefits of of reuse um, and recycling. Mm -hmm. When we deconstruct buildings, we create um, a lot more jobs than with demolition. So a typical project has like four to five people on it for two weeks, uh, whereas demolition is like a couple of people mm -hmm. um, for a few days. So, And also disassembling buildings, you learn a lot about how construction works and you learn about tools and so it's a great way to um, get into the building industry and mm -hmm. learn, you know, good, learn good the point. skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, one of the <clears throat> uh, newsletters that I read is the national newsletter for the uh, American Roofing Association. Oh, interesting. And one of their laments is that now that the economy is booming again, they can't find enough skilled workers. Uh huh. Yeah. They, you know, they hire semi-skilled and they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas this is this is a great way of uh, training people on the job, right? Yeah. Especially especially for the roof work because you have to mm -hmm. you know be pretty confident up there. Yeah, you know, huge yeah. safety considerations. Mm -hmm. And so I imagine your workers are getting just slightly more than a Waikiki dishwasher. Uh, you no, know, well, yeah, <laughs> we you know we we work hard to um, pay as much as possible, but uh, you know it is it is difficult because we're a nonprofit mm -hmm. and we're mm -hmm. you know kind of forging a new industry. But um, yeah, for the folks at Excel, you know we we like to think that it's a pretty good wage at the warehouse as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they get benefits by any chance? Or? Yep, right. We good, have good, uh, yeah. health benefits, and you know with vision and dental, and also. Uh, paid time off and, and uh, sick time so mm, okay. yeah yeah and also like a lot of folks you know feel good about working for an organization that um, you know is making a difference and working yeah, towards ab the sustainability absolutely. yeah mm -hmm. yeah probably all of your guys believe in in sustainability and yeah 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 yeah, yeah we have 35 people now Ooh, so wow so you're, you're moving team. up in the world then yeah Good, good for you, yeah. And getting a decent wage is so important in, in our economy. Right, you know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially so. here in Honolulu, it's uh, mm -hmm. the cost of living is yeah, pretty hard for some mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. So adding to the employment base, that's where the, and good, healthy, outdoor work, my goodness. 
Those, yeah. those, those guys don't have to go to the gym after. No, right. <laughs> Quit your gym membership and come work for Reuse Hawaii. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the uh, next slide then. Yeah, so the local resources is kind of mm -hmm. an obvious one. We um, take apart the buildings and then all the material becomes available for people to reuse. So the, these are a bunch of beams that were salvaged mm -hmm. from the top of a, a parking garage and um, then they were reused to frame a house in Palolo. So it was kind of a neat, neat story where, um, where you know, it was quickly reused and, and mm -hmm. uh, kept out of the landfill and made a resource and helped, helped somebody you know, that was building a house save money and all the, all the rest. So it worked out great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to uh, take a break now, but we will be back in a minute with uh, Think Tech Hawaii Code Green. See you soon. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Hawaii, and I do a show called Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where shrinks and sometimes other people come on and talk about the art and science of psychology, talking to people, relationships. Uh, so if you are curious about shrinks and want to be shrunk and don't know where to go, tune into Shrink Wrap Hawaii. All right? All right. Good afternoon, Howard Wing, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My honored guest today is Quinn Vintum, President and CEO of Reuse Hawaii. And we've been talking about the fact that we continually lament our needing to import virtually everything. We talk about food all the time, but building materials. We have to import virtually all of our building materials, except thanks to Quinn and his crew of 35, we don't need to import all the building materials because we reuse them from existing homes. And one of the points, very good points that he made was the lumber coming off of older homes is very, very high grade. If it weren't high grade, it wouldn't have lasted all this time. Mm -hmm. So that, that adds to the quality of, right. of the new buildings there. And yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. Oh, so yeah. we, to, to show folks like what, what it looks like when we deconstruct a house, we have a, a time-lapse video of, uh, of us doing a Kahala house. So we can show mm -hmm. that to um, give people a sense on you know, what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's take a look at this video. So this is a typical project that we would do of, I think it was 1,500 square feet. Um, had a crew of five doing it for about 10 working days. Um, so the roof is the hardest part. This one had a pitch and gravel roof, so it takes a lot of time to get through it, but we're basically scraping the roof off so that we can get to the, the wood that's underneath it. Um, and we use a compact telehandler machine to manage some of the material and all the lumber goes into these special stack racks that we have. So you can see those kind of coming and going. We haul them out with a flatbed. So all the wall yep. boards coming out. It looks like those guys are pretty darn busy. They, uh... they are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to, you know, touch the entire house, you know, piece by piece. So it's all, you know, a lot of labor. We spend about 400 person hours on a project like this. Wow. Yeah. Oh, talk about labor intensive. Yeah. yeah. So the walls come down quick, and this one had an oak floor, so Ooh. you can see them taking up the oak flooring. It's tongue and groove, so you have to be really careful not to break it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that uh, oak again is a very, very, very valuable lumber. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So there's the TNG flooring coming up. 
then underneath it was all true dimension two by six, so it's like thicker than a, than a two by six that you would uh, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. find new these days. Yeah. Wow. So lots and lots of lumber. Also like all the cabinets, and there were some mm -hmm. nice like Japanese style like doors and fixtures in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we just leave the site bare, and mm -hmm. usually sometimes there's a slab or some walkways still there, and those get taken up by whoever's prepping the site for the new foundation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it would be ideal. Well, I guess it wouldn't happen very often, but if you could use the existing slab. But yeah, you, once usually in a while, people, people yeah. do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not often, though. I think it's just easier for folks to pour a new one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of ultimate resource efficiency there. Right. But of course, most people want bigger homes, so, mm -hmm. yeah. No, oh, that was really interesting, and it gives a good illustration of exactly what happens. And you do keep those guys busy, by George. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I, I think it's probably uh, enjoyable uh, labor for them. Yeah, it's really yeah. fun mm -hmm. work. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of something new every day too. So, mm -hmm. and you're jumping around to different projects. So, yeah, it's a, it's really fun, and also like. It really strength you know strengthens you and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's something something about that kind of make makes you feel more alive. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, uh, I and so many other people just have desk jobs, and sometimes mm -hmm. we'll be sitting there. Wow, do I really? I want to get out. I want to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And those guys are living <laughs> that dream. Yeah. How about a think tech show? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here, huh? Yep, yep. Nice. Yeah, I, I love this part, yeah. So why, why don't we go to uh, another slide? I think we've got a couple more. Ooh. Yeah, so the this warehouse is, is where all the yeah. material goes. Yeah, it's the, the hub, the resource for everybody. Um, we have about 20, uh, 28,000, probably around 30,000 folks now that, uh, that you know, have signed up in our system as customers. and. Uh, it's a 40,000 square foot facility. Um, the inside we have doors and cabinets and plumbing and electrical fixtures wow. and windows and trim. Then we have a big lumber yard outside, uh, all kinds of different lumber. Lumber is our biggest seller. Um, we also have like masonry and um, you know roofing and things like that. Good so. Lord, you, you didn't build this warehouse by any chance? No, right? this is a warehouse from the 50s. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's right mm -hmm. Eva of the medical school in Kakaako. Oh. Yeah, it used to be a, a, a freight uh, uh, kind of container. They bring containers in and then parcel them out. That this is way back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've been really lucky to be there for uh, nine, uh, eight years now. So. Mm. Yeah, and that's our tenth year in, in, as an organization, so it's a big milestone being, making it one decade. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, I can see where this could be a tricky uh, business. Yeah, uh, some yeah. folks are like, wow, why haven't they started something like Reuse Hawaii before? And mm -hmm. it, the reason mm -hmm. why is it's uh, pretty difficult, especially on like the economic level, just making it all work with the mm -hmm. you know, cost of doing business and all the insurance and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you do need to insure those guys, too. That's, uh, yeah, more, yeah, more liability, than... workers' comp, yeah, everything. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. pretty high limits, too, especially when we do uh, military or government work, which we've done. So, oh, so is the military a customer of yours, too? Can yeah, uh, you... let's see, a year and a half ago, we did a... Um, airplane hangar roof mm -hmm. so we salvaged about 80,000 lineal feet of this um, it, they call it car decking it's a two by six old growth um, material so yeah it was huge huge amounts of, of material some of it's actually uh, reused down at the new international marketplace mm. they um, put it in as a ceiling and a facade of some of the stores so Pretty neat. Do, do they publicize that when they use reuse material like you that? You know, we so, were talking yeah. about putting a little info board up, so mm -hmm. yeah, the contractor was thinking about doing that. Because yeah, if you walked by, you may not realize that mm -hmm. it was you know from mm -hmm. Fort Island and old lumber. So I'm thinking <clears throat> they they would doubtlessly have a website. At least they could use that as a marketing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I I'm my basic. <clears throat> Uh, professionalism is in energy efficiency and the builders who build in a very efficient way use that as a marketing tool absolutely yeah 
because green is in yep, these green days. Green building. So, yeah, yeah. So I would think that uh, customers like that, especially with a lot of walk by. Good, yeah, uh, we've yeah. been seeing a lot of uh, like restaurant build outs. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Mud Hen Water, which is a restaurant on Wai Lai that it's all flooring that was salvaged from the old advertiser building. Mm -hmm. So 1920s, it's a blocks on end material, very unique. And mm -hmm. uh, like I think everybody that walks in there that knows a little bit about building notices yeah. the floor, you know, and asks questions. So it's neat. Yeah, yeah, they should have at least a little plaque or, or something there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Par parts of the old advertiser building. Some of us remember that building very, very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all newly remodeled mm -hmm. now. So in terms of finance, can you charge a really good premium for the fact that you have uh, very, very high grade lumber, which maybe is very difficult to get hold of these days? Yeah, and some of the, like if we see really nice redwood um, or if there's, you know, we had mahogany and things like that, mm -hmm. or of course, mm -hmm. koa. Um, we usually charge, like we compare like what the market rate is and mm -hmm. you know, usually mm -hmm. charge actually below that. Um, but our mission is to redistribute as much material into reuse as possible. So um, whatever that takes, like right now we're actually giving material away. Um, it's mostly like four foot three to four mm -hmm. foot pieces. We call them shorties. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. you know, they're all free. We're just trying to get people to come down and, and reuse them. So, But um, you certainly don't give away co-op because I, I needed no. to purchase a, just a, I don't know, four or five foot uh, slab of co once and I tried, uh -huh. I think it was Martin and MacArthur. Oh. And they wanted, oh, yeah. I don't know, $100 for one, one piece. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a hundred, but it was an astronomical sure, sum. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah Coe is like super rare, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I uh, can't remember. It's, I, I think it's like $40 a board foot or something, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, serious yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then also you uh, sell sinks and windows and light fixtures. Yep, and, everything yeah. that they can, you can salvage from an old house that's in good reusable condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so doors are really popular. We sell like 200 and something doors a month, which is always surprising because it's so much work to you know reinstall a door and everything. Mm -hmm. But there's some doors that have so much character. So and you, again, wouldn't be able to find it unless you you know had it, you salvaged it from an existing. Building, yeah, I, so. I, I can see that. That would be a, a could be a centerpiece of, of a new home. You know, it looks like a conventional right. new home, but boom, there's this antique looking uh, door there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, uh, accent yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what what else uh, do you? So we you've got uh, sinks, toilets. Yeah, plumbing yeah. fixtures, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mm -hmm. actually have a new program, too, called the Honolulu Tool Library, mm -hmm. which is uh, people are really excited about. It's, it's uh, Honolulu's or Hawaii's first uh, lending library for tools. Mm -hmm. So um, there's different memberships, but, uh, but the base membership is $55 a year. And then you get access as a member of the tool library to basically borrow any of the tools oh, that they have. Yeah. Yeah. So like tile saws are really popular, chop saws, sanders, you know, things that, that you need to do your projects. Mm -hmm. And it's great for folks that um, live in condos or can't afford to buy new material, sure, new sure. tools. And, or, or they're not professional, they're just going to use the tools once and then... Right, yeah. 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 So we've got a few more slides and not a whole heck of a lot of time. Let, let's see what else we've got here. Yeah, yeah, so we've kept about 8 million pounds of material out of the landfill since we started in 2007. 8 million pounds. Mm, yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm, and again, mm -hmm. lots of lumber, uh, material that has a lot of embodied energy and also huge community value. Mm-hmm. So, and then I think the next slide is uh, about yeah, the number of projects that we've done. What, what, oh, de decon is in de deconstruction. Deconstruction, yeah, yeah, 450 wow. projects. Hmm. So. Most of them residences, but you, you mentioned that military jobs. Yeah, some commercial. Some commercial yeah. Yeah, yeah, our first project was actually a big warehouse, but uh, we found that the residential houses we, can, we do really well with. It's, they're mm -hmm. predictable, and there's you know, a diverse amount of material and pretty safe to do in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So then the next slide um, talks about, oh, I guess Oops. that's it. Oh. Yeah, so thanks for all the interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who are your typical uh, customers then? We have a lot of do-it-yourself homeowners, mm -hmm. people that, uh, you know, work hard on the weekends, getting their house projects done. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, like, uh, contractors that build green, uh, contractors that do the restaurant and retail build-outs with salvage material. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more, we have the set designers coming in um, for the TV shows and movies that are really? filmed here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's great for them because they, they don't want to spend a lot of mat money on new material, so they you know, come in and And, and they resources. actually build the sets. Can you give, give some names? Is that proprietary? Um, or? I'm, you know, I'm a little out of the loop <laughs> yeah. on the particulars uh, on which uh, ones. Uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, most of the, the bigger, um, you know, Hawaii Five O and all those you mm -hmm. know, come to us. So. They and also look for material that has character, so it's perfect. Absolutely. And could they build their set, and then when they're through with the set, could they resell to you or call, uh, call you up and say, they, you know, we just help them. Set. We take it back, and mm -hmm. so we can reuse mm -hmm. it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of renting the material, rather. Yeah, than right, that. in a sense. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that, that must be a good source of revenue, then, too, because you use it, and then you, you get it back again. Yep, yep. We're yeah. still trying to um, break even on the warehouse program. Mm -hmm. um, we do really well with sales, but just the, with the rent and the staffing and everything, we're still not quite breaking even. So mm -hmm. um, m a little bit better on the, on the deconstruction program, but uh, yeah, still trying to fine tune the economics. And mm -hmm. we're also inviting uh, corporate sponsors to, to come on board and help mm -hmm. us and support Reese Hawaii in our waste reduction mission. And, and uh, you know, then they would get exposure as a corporate sponsor for and, that. And you're a nonprofit, so it's tax deductible. Tax deductible, yeah, mm -hmm. 501 mm -hmm. C3. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we've just got a few seconds left. Where are you, and how can, if people are interested, how can they find you? Well, the, yeah, the biggest thing is come on down to the warehouse. There's still some folks that haven't been down, so it's mm -hmm. a must see. Uh, as mentioned, it's just Eva of the medical school in Kaka'ako. So if you take Keawe Street from mm -hmm. Ala Moana, that's at the Gold Bond Building. You mm -hmm. just go towards mm -hmm. the ocean and it dead ends right at our gate. Mm. Um, and um, if folks have a house that they're wanting to demolish, they could call us about that. We also do remodel-related projects. If you're just taking out your kitchen cabinets or doors and windows, then we can help with that as well. Uh, we just started a, a pickup program as well, so mm. we have trucks cruising around picking up material for folks that can't otherwise bring it down. Um, yeah, and just other, otherwise spreading the word about oh. the importance of waste reduction and knowing that there's community resource in these older buildings that are getting taken down. Wow. That, that is really inspirational, and on that very, very cheery note, we must say fond adieu to Quinn Vitam, CEO of Reuse Hawaii. I am Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you, and see you next time. And thank you so much, Quinn. Aloha. Thank you. Yeah.